welcome back. Today, hopefully, we'll be able to finish the gun cabinet to curio cabinet conversion. The first thing I'm going to do is measure out for the shelves how thick or how deep shelves I need. I'm not worried about how long they are at this point, just how thick. And if you can see, it's about seven and a quarter inches. So you can't go down to the hardware store and just go buy a piece of wood that's going to be seven and a quarter inches. So I'm going to have to strip all the wood down to fit. Um, I'd recommend, if that was the same size as your cabinet, getting a one by eight and then cutting off three quarters of the board so that it'll fit correctly. And I'll show you how to do that. Uh, it's actually a board you can buy. It's particle board that's made for to be a shelf. So it's actually going to be the right kind of wood that I'm going to need. So I'm just going to strip it down to the right thickness and then we'll cut it to the right lengths. I'll do that next. Shelves cut the right width. Now we'll see how long I need each one. So if you look here, we're about 26 and a half to the piece of wood. We have to go on the other side behind it. So I'm going to say 27 inches will be just about right. So, we're gonna so I got my board that we already cut. We're going to measure out. 27 inches and make a mark so that'd be right here once I have the mark on the board come in with my square line it up and go all the way across so that's easy to read and cut so I have my mark here that I made earlier, which is 27 inches. I'm going to line it up with the saw blade, turn the saw on, make one smooth cut, put that board down, repeat the process. I'm only putting in three shelves in this cabinet. Uh, you can decide how many shelves you'd want to add, you know, if you want four or five, depending on the size of the items you're going to try and display in the cabinet, that determines on how many shelves you actually want. Now this is the leftover piece when I made my two cuts on the long board for my shelving and I decided I'm just going to use this as the brace for the shelf. It's about one and a half by one inch thick so you could go and get a one by two and paint it and do the same thing. I'm not able to use the mounting brackets like in a normal curio which would be something like this due to this back being a particle board it's really thin I'd have to add an extra strip of wood anyway so if I'm going to add a strip of wood I'm just going to do it the easy way and use a one by two and hold the shelves up that way so I'll next cut down this one by two to fit inside the cabinet and then I'll show you how to mount everything together all right I have all my pieces cut Went ahead and just cut all of them and I'd show you just because it'd be the same repeated process. So I have my three shelves. As I stated, I was putting three shelves in this one. This shelf is actually an inch thinner due to the wood trim at the bottom. And all I'm using this shelf to do is to hide it where the rifle uh, butts used to go in the gun cabinet. So if I put this down and everything fits like it should, boom. May need to touch up a little bit of paint since it is a little bit thicker than the wood trim, but it works and it does exactly what I want. I just need to touch it up with some paint. I'll probably have to touch it up anyway, so it's not a big deal. 
And then the second shelf goes right here where the top of the guns would be, the barrels. Um, we just want to cover that up as well because we don't want it to be a gun cabinet anymore. We want it to be a curio cabinet. And that's how that looks. So now you already can see the process. And now all we have to do is get our tape measure and measure between the bottom shelf and that shelf we just put in. We'll figure out where exactly we want to put our next shelf. And it's roughly 34 inches, give or take. So we're going to come in. We know it's 34 inches. We're going to come up 17 inches because that'd be half. We come in with our trim piece. We'll put it in the back and the sides to be able to hold that shelf at 17 inches. And that would be finishing up the top. You could add a shelf to the bottom. I'm not going to. I like storing taller things, just like the Curio cabinet. You can see it's a pretty tall shelf. I don't want another one here because it would be too small for any of the items I would actually display in a Curio. So I'm just going to put the three, which is actually two shelves in the bottom, because I want to be able to display bigger things. If you wanted to put more shelves, you just need more of the one by twos. Measure out how far distance you want to put the shelves. You can put five shelves, three shelves, four shelves. Up to you how many you want to put. I just think with the way it's set up, I'll have to put a trip piece there as well. The way it's set up with the uh, gun rack with the barrel here, you don't want to. You could remove that if you wanted to. I didn't want to. I'll just cover it up and add a couple trim pieces to the side, just like I'll do down here, and you'll be all done. So I'll come back when I have the trim piece set up and I'll show you what that looks like. So the next thing I'm going to do is pre-drill the holes for my screws. Um, unfortunately I don't have any white head screws so I will have to drill or screw the screws in and then come back and paint over. Repeat that process on every piece. So I got all the holes drilled and I got all the screws preset. Now I'm going to go through and set the shelves with my tape measure and a level. Once again, I said if you wanted to add shelves at the bottom, you could feel free to do that. I'm not going to just because I know the size of items that I'm going to put in this curio are going to be a little bit taller, so I don't want to have to mess with shelving. Next, I have handles for the bottom two doors that we'll put on. We'll put the handles on, we'll put the doors on, and then we'll work on the top door. Remember, we had some issues with the screws holding it together. On our bottom doors, we currently have two holes for the old handles. I'm using a new style handle like this. It only requires one hole. I'm probably going to use this bottom hole here. So what I'll do is I'll just use some white silicone caulk, since we painted the doors white anyways, and touch that up so you can't even see that hole. I'm going to leave the lock open. Even though the lock's not on the other side, nobody would know that if you're just looking at the cabinet. And there's really nothing I'm going to put underneath that needs to be locked. So, be right back. So, I got my silicone. Like I said, I'm just going to apply it. Just need it to be smooth. Don't need a whole bunch on there. I may have to do it multiple times just to get it really smooth. I try not to over apply. Um, it's a lot harder when you have to sand it down. It doesn't want to sand very well. Uh, but you just fill in the hole and then on the other hole what I like I said we're gonna put the knob so we stick the screw through put the knob on and there you go and so now our door actually has a knob it'll look really nice when we put them on I'm gonna duplicate that on the other side and then I'll be right back Alright, I got both holes filled. I got the handles on. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and install the doors. Um, we did not remove the old holes, so this should not be a hard process to reinstall the doors back where they were. Shouldn't have any issues with alignment. Because like I said, we're using the same same holes from the first time they were installed from the factory. Okay, so there is both of our bottom doors secured with the handle. Once again, no lock, but that's how we're going to keep that. As you can see, some of the paint's still wet. I've been having issues with bleed through with this varnish. It was very dark. Um, I think I'm up to three or four coats now and still have some spots I need to touch up and repaint. Next, we'll put the uh, big door on the top. Be right back. I repeated the same process for the top door with the handle. I used some silicone caulk that was white, filled in the hole I didn't need, and then used the two holes I did need. Once again, I left the lock opening, so it looks like there's a lock. At this point, there's not a lock on this door. <clears throat> I can always add one later on if I chose to, but I think it'll look just fine the way it is. So next, I'm going to install the top door. And that should be it for today. We'll finish up. Hey, of course it's a little dirty, has sawdust on it, but there is a completed curio from gun cabinet to curio cabinet. I also have these puck lights you can add up at the top so that it would be a lighted display, which I may do later. Um, not in a video or anything, that's just personal preference. You don't have to add light. It's just up to you. Once again, you could add another shelf at the bottom. You could add multiple shelves in the curio, but as you can see, it looks, I think, pretty good for something I found on the side of the road. I already had the white paint, uh, the hinges I did buy, that was about $3. Um, and then the wood, as you saw, I had it laying around. That was from another project I had. I think it was like an 8 or $9 piece of wood. So. For under 20 bucks, I was able to take a gun cabinet and convert it into a curio cabinet. If you like this video, make sure you smash the like button. If you have any other ideas that you'd like me to convert something into that was an antique into some other object, uh, leave them down in the comment section. Uh, thanks for watching.